Hello everyone, this is Samarin, and in this tutorial we're going to talk about the Challenge Maker in 3.0. Now I did do a tutorial back in 2.0 for the Challenge Maker, but enough things have changed with the new Challenge Maker that I felt it was due for an upgrade in the tutorial. So we're going to drop a Challenge Maker here down, and we're actually going to build a couple challenges really quickly. And kind of talk about the properties and everything as we go. So I'm just dropping a couple locators here because they're going to be handy for what we're talking about. So really in a challenge maker, let's go through some of the properties quickly. Now, auto start on, and there's an important word in there, toy box game load. If the game is saved as a toy box game, not just a regular toy box, and you turn this to on, that challenge will automatically start when the toy box game is loaded. Result score label. This is to show uh, when the game is over. It It's really what have you been counting? What has the game been all about? Uh, usually these top two options are what you're going to be picking because for a scoreboard it's point, for a timer it's time. Simple enough. Uh, and the first challenge we're going to do is actually going to be time. So I'm going to select time. First challenge we're going to do is we're going to set up a timer going to be set to like let's say 30 seconds and you have 30 seconds to defeat 10 enemies and the more time you still have left when you're done the better you've done in the challenge that will be the first challenge so i'm going to set it up like that as we go now uh most of the time if you're in a race or something uh the lower time is better and the higher time is worse so you would choose low to high but because I'm going to do a countdown timer, and we're looking at how much time you have left when you're done this challenge, high to low is the choice uh, that's going to decide the rank order that people are put in based on the time they have left when they finish the challenge. Now, start location and location has changed from 2.0. You can now have all players start at one location. You can have teams start at different locations. Or you can, like you could before, uh, put player 1 to player 4 in separate locations. For this, I want all players at one location. And the end location, you can have wherever the challenge ends. You can bring them back to the challenge maker. You could send them to a locator. Or again, separate locations, separate team locations. And these will be based on the locators that we're about to look at. I'm going to say for end location, just wherever you are is fine. Now, here's a new feature that's really nice. If you set up a uh, end location that is, let's say, a locator, if the person aborts the challenge, do you want them to still end up at that locator? Perhaps that challenge, once you finished it, was going to send you to a hidden area. If they abort the challenge, don't want them going there, you would leave it off. Or if it's just about a safety thing, you could turn it on. So I'm going to leave it off. Why not? Then there's the option quit toy box game when ended. Same as that first option here, toy box game. So when the challenge is done, if this toy box is saved as a toy box game and you set this option on, as soon as the challenge is done, the toy box game will quit and bring you back to the main menu. And then game start countdown. When you start a challenge maker, there's a 3, 2, 1, go message that you can make go away just by selecting then you can give your challenge maker a title and a description that will show up when the player activates the challenge. And then the challenge type we will get into in the second challenge. So in this challenge, we are going to use a timer. And, and timer, there we go and an enemy wave generator. Now when it comes to locators and other toys, it doesn't matter if you select the locator first or the toy first, the same location menu will pop up at the end. Now since I selected all players start at the same locator, I'm going to only select this top option of all, because all players will show up at this locator right here. I'm going to move this locator back here. 
and I'm gonna make that my end location. Now the timer, I want it to put its time results into this challenge maker. I want the challenge maker to be able to use the time results. And you can either go from the challenge maker to the timer or the timer to the challenge maker. Again, it doesn't matter if they both have that new link time connection. Now for the timer, I'm going to make this a 30 second timer. Display will be visible and it will count down. And enemy wave generator. I'm going to have them spawn right there. And instead of 10, let's just put up some droids here. Put up seven of those. Three of those. I need to feed them in 30 seconds. I want no generation delay. Hold until all are generated. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the output options of a challenge maker. And we'll check here. There's invites accepted, started, game ended, game completed, game failed, results closed. Now the easiest way to look at this is they almost happen in the order they are in this list. So Invites accepted is the first one that happens, and it happens uh, in multiplayer. Uh, everyone has to accept an invite before the challenge will even begin. Uh, when you accept or you say you want to compete in the challenge, that counts as invites accepted if you're solo. So it fires first um, and fires pretty much right away. Started is after the 3 to 1 go countdown, or if you've turned that off, it's when the go happens, it fires off a signal down this started. Started is great for actually spawning your enemies, starting your timer, things like that. Game ended happens regardless. Uh, when the game is over, if you've aborted, if you've completed, or if you've failed, the game ended message will send out the second the challenge maker is done. Uh, game completed and game failed, game completed will fire off if you succeed, game failed will fire off if you failed at the challenge, and they will both happen uh, after this game ended. Messages happen. This one happens first, then these two. And then if you have a scoreboard or a timer result that's going to pop up, after that pop-up has gone away, a results closed message will fire out. So what we're going to do is we're going to use an invite accepted. I use it a lot to reset items to make sure they're ready to go. So I'm going to reset this timer with that invites accepted. And when it starts, I want to generate those enemies we just had. Now they take a second or two to generate, so I'm going to be nice, and I'm going to say once the wave is generated, then we start this timer. So all that's nice and smooth, and so we basically if the timer reaches zero, or timer expired, that means you've failed the challenge because you haven't defeated all the enemies before that. And if the wave is defeated, that means you succeeded the game. You've defeated them all before the timer. Simple as that. Now, I like to keep things clean, so I'm going to use game ended here. So when the game ends, if I defeat all the enemies, I want the timer to stop, obviously. And if the timer failed, I want to get rid of the enemies. So I'm going to use Game Ended on both these tools to clear them up at the end of the challenge. And that's all there is to it. So I should start there. Enemies will spawn there. When the entire challenge is done, I should show up here. Simple enough. That is the beauty of a challenge maker. Start challenge. So there, I just defeated all those enemies. It gives me my score. This is how much time was left because the time was counting down. 
and I should appear back here. So that's how you use a challenge maker. Uh, incredibly simple to use, but you can get very complicated with them. Uh, let's actually, I want to show the new option in the challenge maker. Uh, it's kind of handy in that you can spawn vehicles now with the challenge maker. And the beautiful part about spawning vehicles with the challenge maker is that the players cannot get out of those vehicles. And that's where challenge type comes in. You can have a foot race, you could have no vehicles or mounts allowed, you could have ground vehicles, mounts, sprinting mounts, bashing mounts, helicopter vehicles, fixed wing vehicles. So we're going to pick fixed wing and then ask you what type. And you can go into the list of the ones that you have bought out of the toy store. You can even put down a hexagonal disc. And so just to do this, I'm going to say ground vehicles. And I'm going to put a hexagonal disc on of a ground vehicle. And let's see. Hexagonal power disc. Darkwing ducks rat catcher. You can actually force every player to be in a vehicle they don't even have the power disc for now. Which is just pretty awesome. And so I'm going to go step on this challenge maker. And it's going to start, and I'm going to be in Darkwing Duck's Rat Catcher. Now, of course, I haven't put any options on this challenge maker, so it will never end unless I board it. But, as you can see, I can change seats, but I cannot hop out of this vehicle because I am locked to it during that challenge. So that's the new feature of the challenge maker. It's really amazing to be able to lock players into the challenge maker or into vehicles themselves. And that's a great new feature. And um, I'll have to abort. Now another thing we want to look at really quick with the challenge maker, and of course I'm going the wrong way, is we want to look at the inputs to a challenge maker. You can basically start one. You could start a challenge maker from somewhere else. You can use this to make the game know that it has succeeded, that the player's won. Use this to make the, play or the game know that the player has failed. Um, and this one is if you're in a multiplayer situation. You can log people's time differences while the challenge maker is still running by using log player 1 to 4's completion, or whichever triggering player, which we'll get into later because that can get complicated to talk about. So, before we take off, I'm just going to step on this challenge maker, and I'm going to purposely fail this game, if I have 30 seconds left. There, we have failed the game. And come back to our end location. So that is how to use challenge makers. They, you can get very complicated with them and build some very impressive things with them. And they're really helpful for really f helping you put a bunch of logic together to really work out an interesting game. So again, this has been Samirian. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. And have yourselves a wonderful day.